Hey, what's going on here, guys? Zach here, and welcome back to Spicy Iguana, aka my YouTube channel, where I discuss various breakdowns of how to do different topics. Today's topic will be on throwing low kicks in different uh, scenarios and different situations. Now, <clears throat> I, uh, first off, I want to briefly apologize for the lack of uploads I've been having as of recently. I've been very busy, had a really tight schedule, and a lot of exams I had to do. But um, thankfully, I'm free now, but I'm still feeling a little bit under the weather because uh, my father got, got sick, and then I think I got it as well. Uh, and then I kind of developed a little bit of a, uh, a throat irritation and, uh, and whatnot. But otherwise, I'm feeling a little bit better. But then I went back to training, and then I think I got a bit of a mild concussion as well because, you know, uh, there was this one guy I went up against in sparring who um, kind of went out of control. But you know what? Uh, overall, all in all, you know, he was a nice guy. I'm sure he was a, a nice person, but, you know, he was slightly bigger than me. Uh, I did tell him to tone down a bit after, and, you know, nothing to worry about. Otherwise, I'm slowly healing uh, and feeling a little bit better. So I thought, hey, why not today make a tutorial video on today's discussion? So throwing low kicks in different situations. This will also include some sparring footage of the uh, footage I have at uh, I've been training at in the gym with other sparring partners and other inclusive videos as well if I find any. But <clears throat> as of today's discussion, we'll be discussing different low kicks of when and when to throw them, right? You got to look out for different situations. You got to have a, a, a good eye, a keen eye for these kind of situations, when to throw the low kick or not. Because there are some situations when you when it's good to throw a low kick, expect, like let's say for an example, me and my partner are sparring up, are squaring up, right? We're in a nice Muay Thai stance. Let's say he throws it off of the jab, right? This is perfect for me to parry the jab and come in with my up, my chopping up low kick, which I am I feel like I am rather good at, uh, especially when it comes to chopping a leg uh, in, to the low kick, right? So when he comes in, bam, boom, and then I chop upwards to my low kick. Well, that's great. That's what if he's coming forward, right? I can do this off of, um, I can also do this off of a long guard. Let's say he's trying to throw a hook or a cross. I could, I could block him here, stop him, and then I could chop him with a leg kick, right? Now, that's perfect when his leg is heavy on the side. I could even do this, boom. I could, I could even uh, wait him out here. I could, uh, he could throw that hook, and then I could chop that leg. Now. That's great for those kind of situations when he's heavy on that leg. You can manipulate it to any way you want. However, what if he's more defensive on that Muay Thai stance, right? What if, right? And uh, we all see the, uh, uh, I forget his name, uh, from the UFC. Uh, even, it's been happening a little more recently, actually. I saw a couple of clips on Instagram where one guy would throw a leg kick, right? He'd just slap his leg. And then as soon as he, uh, as soon as the guy comes in to defend it with a slight little check, right? And then he gets all of his knee, his, his whole tibula just snapped, right? And it was, it was, of course, horrific to watch. I mean, as someone who's good at leg kicking or decently good at leg kicking, that's terrible to see. And, you know, you start to wonder if it has anything to do with conditioning, if it has anything to do prior before the fight, or, you know, if he's, you know, yeah, had the right amount of training and the intensity of his sparring and and uh, pad work and whatnot, right? And how long he's been doing it, right? Now, maybe that's not the case. Maybe it's all about timing when it comes to uh, when it comes to throwing those uh, shots, right? So um, there's a right time when to throw it and a right time to not, right? If he's if he's uh, ready to defend and I throw this. If I throw that upward kick, of course I'm going to injure my own shin, right? And possibly break it. Uh, so so uh, what should I do instead, right? i got to pressure him against the ropes and make sure, or i I got to get him heavy on that leg. And this is what I said, different low kicks for different situations. Let's say I've landed a couple good leg kicks, right? So, like, uh, during the beginning of the round, we're moving around. I parry, I go into the leg kick, all right? And then... Switch it up on him, bam, now he's heavy on that one leg, he's going, okay, this guy's good at leg kicks, all right? So, we're going to be moving around, moving around, so like, bam, bam, right? I'm just 
I'm throwing leg kick after leg kick and he's starting to not like it. So he's starting to get a little more defensive going, okay, you're throwing leg kicks at me. I don't like it. So I'm going to start checking and see how you like that. Right? So once they throw one in the water, bam, he checks it. Okay. Now this is when I have to start mixing it up. I can't just throw leg kick after leg kick after leg kick because eventually he's going he's, he's gonna to capitalize on it. Right? So what I'm going to do then right is use that upwards and chopping down leg kick right because if his legs all the way up here there's no way i'm going to be able to throw that leg up and still chop him right but what i can do is do a pendulum step into that leg kick right this could be off of throwing off of the jab now the jab doesn't technically have to land it just has to has to come to a space so that it uh it distracts him and gets his attention up here and that's perfect so i throw that up there and then I come to the side and then I chop to the side like that down into my pendulum step low kick. Now, the best thing about that kick is that, about well, leg kicks in general, is that you don't always have to hit with the shin. And that's a discussion for another video. But uh, brief, briefly saying that you could either hit, you could uh, buckle him with your uh, foot or you could buckle him with the shin, which does tend to have a little more power, right, over the foot, right? But, you know. Although it hurts more, it'll definitely, it's definitely enough to get him to feel that effect of that leg kick, right? And that's exactly what you want. Now, so again, real, uh, real slowly, I'll show. So let's say, throw a couple good leg kicks, bam, carry, bam, chop up. Okay, now he doesn't like it. So, bam, okay. Now I'm getting him heavy on that one leg. Maybe... Maybe he's starting to check a little bit more and he's wary of the jab is coming. Okay, I'll mix it up on him. Bam, boom, boom, liver shot. He'll, he'll crumple down. Bam, down to the leg. <laughs> Ernesto Hoost, a K1, I believe K1, uh, kickboxer champion known as Mr. Perfect, has been known to use this a lot during his fights and he KO'd a lot of people with his leg kicks just like that where he'd mix it up go to the body make sure he goes to he goes to the liver hook or head hook getting them very heavy on that one leg right and making sure he's manipulating the, his opponent's body to be heavy on that leg so he could chop right down right into that leg kick and that's exactly what you're looking for now you could try this out in sparring you could try this out in a fight if you have a fight coming up even though I don't know much, I've never been in a belt myself. All I can say is that try it, try it uh, and practice it and see how far you go. It's basics, but, um, you know, even I have a little more to learn. So, you know, why not, uh, you know, go around trying to spread as much knowledge as I can. So, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. If you guys have any questions or any requests, please let me know down in the comments below. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.